Welcome to the Michigan Works Association 2020 Annual Conference. My name is Stephanie Willis. I'm the Director of Communications with the Michigan Works Association. On behalf of the staff at the association and all of our sponsors, we thank you for being a part of the conference in this session titled From Data to Decisions, Partnering for an Intelligent Workforce System. A big thank you to Michigan Works Southeast for sponsoring today's workshop session. Our sponsors help make this conference happen and we are very thankful for their support. In addition to our sponsors, there are exhibitors who have also given up their time to be a part of our event. Please be sure to visit the exhibitor booths during the designated exhibit hall times. Before we begin today's session, there are a few housekeeping items I need to share with you. Please make sure your audio is muted. If you have a question, you can enter it in the chat and the presenters will answer them as time allows. We would appreciate your feedback about the conference and this session. Please take a few moments to complete the short survey. The link to the survey has been posted to the chat and will be posted to the, to the chat again at the end of this session. Presentations will be available post-conference on the Michigan Works Association website. And now I would like to introduce your speakers for this session. Scott Powell, Director of Research, Bureau of Labor Market Information and Strategic Initiatives with the State of Michigan. And Ben Damero, Director of Michigan Works Southwest. Okay, we can take it away, Stephanie. She's gone. Okay, we'll take it away. Uh, well, good morning, everyone. Um, glad to see we have so many people in attendance. Um, let me go ahead and start sharing some slides with you all so we can get going. Bear with me for just a second. Okay, everybody can see the screen okay, I assume. Ben, look good? Looks good. Okay, great. Okay, so uh, again, good morning to everyone. Um, so as, uh, as Stephanie already said, um, I'm Scott Powell in the state of Michigan. I'm the Director of Research for the DTMB Bureau of Labor Market Information and Strategic Initiatives. And uh, I know some of you know me, but many more of you know Ben as Director of Michigan Works Southwest. Um, and I think I know I, I can speak for both Ben and myself in saying that so we're both really excited to be sharing with you all for the first time something that we've been working on for uh, I think almost two years now is, is how far back the start of this project goes. Now I'm sure you can uh, guess a little bit about what we're going to talk about today just from the title of our presentation. Uh, I know in some of the sessions I've been in on, right, there's been lots of terms uh, used like big data. Um, artificial intelligence, advanced analytics, things like that. And what Ben and I are going to talk about today is going to deal with all of those things. But really what, uh, you know, big picture, what we're talking about today is something else you've probably heard of before, which is data-driven decisions, evidence-based decision-making. Um, what can we do? How can we leverage the data that we have available to us to help our job seekers arrive at the best outcome possible? Uh, and that's what we're trying to do with this project. And um, the way we've gone about this with this project, with this partnership, is uh, the development of some tools. These tools are for our workforce development partners, in particular for Michigan Works staff, as well as job seekers. So the development of these tools, uh, how this project is going, and what it's going to look like going forward is what we're going to be talking about today. So um, how do we get here? I know I don't need to tell this audience about the importance of a job, uh, the role that plays in someone's dignity, the role that plays in someone's prosperity, uh, and just their overall quality of life. Uh, that's why we do what we do. But uh, obviously in the last uh, few months, in 2020, since March, right, um, things have changed quite a bit. Um, we've experienced um, an extremely unique recession, and we know there's a lot of people out there uh, hurting right now that we want to help. So while this project began prior to COVID, it's only made it all the more important. We know there's a lot of people out there uh, that are unemployed. We have um, a lot of people on continuing unemployment insurance claims. But we also know that one of the unique things about this recovery uh, is who it's affecting. We know that it's not everyone being affected equally 
by this economic situation that we're in right now. We know that certain groups are bearing the brunt of um, this uh, situation much harder than others. So um, these groups come from a lot of places. Um, so it could be those in low-wage industries, it could be women, it could be people of color, right? We know that certain groups are having a more difficult time. Maybe you've heard something uh, mentioned about a K-shaped recovery, which means that some groups are trending up as they, as they go through the recovery process. Other groups are trending down, right? And so uh, we want to make sure that what we're doing is when we're reaching out to these groups that we want to help through the workforce development system, right? We want to get people on that path that's trending upward. Right? So I know uh, probably many of you saw um, Leo Director Donna Frio speak on Monday morning about all the state is doing right now uh, to help out with that recovery. So this project fits in with that perfectly, right? How do we use data? How do we harness data and information to get these individuals on the right road to recovery, on the one that's trending up, not the one that's trending down? So that's, uh, in a nutshell, the, the motivation, the big motivation behind this project. Um, so, and again, what we're doing is we're developing tools to help our workforce development partners and uh, use that data. So what I'm gonna tell you a little bit about uh, today, followed up by Ben, is um, I'll give you a little bit of background on the project, how this got started in our work with Data for the American Dream. We'll talk a little bit about the, the project purpose, big picture. Um, now, while this project's been going on for uh, you know about a couple of years now is when it started, the development work of the tools has only begun recently. So um, we're still early days there, but we still also have something we can share with you today. Um, we can show you some, some early drafts of what that tool is gonna look like. Um, and then we'll have some time at the end for discussion and feedback as well. So giving you a little bit of background on this project and how it all got started. So like I said, it was about two years ago uh, when some key partners got together. So that of course involved uh, the Department of Labor and Economic Opportunity, in particular uh, at the time, what was the Workforce Development Agency? And also uh, my group in DTNB, uh, LMISI, as well as our research partners at the Upjohn Institute and uh, Ben's group at Michigan Work Southwest. So um, we all got together and we started uh, thinking about, okay, what would it look like if we were to come up with an intelligent workforce system? And we weren't starting from scratch. So um, the, the folks at Upjohn, right, they, they were doing this over 20 years ago in the state of Georgia. And Ben's gonna tell you a little bit about that system later. But you know, they, they started developing a system like this over 20 years ago in Georgia, but we wanted to build on that. We wanted to take the lessons learned from that project as well as incorporate all the advanced methodologies uh, that we've developed over the last 20 years, right? And apply that as well to make this new system, these tools we're developing uh, as, as strong as they could possibly be. And when we got started, we had uh, some internal funding to get this going. We also had a uh, national dislocated worker grant from the US Department of Labor. But we knew that if we wanted to make this vision of reality that we were going to need more support than that. We needed some more funding. Right about at that time, uh, the first part of, or in, uh, the first half anyway, of 2019, um, along came data for the American dream. So if you haven't heard of, or also known as D4AD, and if you haven't heard about data for the American dream, um, what this was is, so it's a group, it's a nonprofit group, um, it involves several philanthropies uh, that started in particular by Schmidt Futures. And what D4 AD did, they basically just put out a call for ideas. They wanted to collect, you know, see who had what they thought were the best and most promising ideas for how we could really get innovative with how we use data uh, to help education and career decisions, especially through some public-private partnerships. So, um, and it, when doing this, right, D4AD's goal isn't just to use data to help everyone, right? They want to inform, right, help people make better career decisions, better education decisions through data-driven information. But it wasn't necessarily a, a wide net, right? They had a very targeted population they wanted to help. They wanted to help those individuals that are uh, low income, lower skilled, underemployed, unemployed, right? And, you know, we read that part of what they were doing and immediately, you know, that's familiar to us, right? Because that's what uh, 
we're doing, that's what you guys are doing, that's what Mission Works is doing every day, is dealing with that target population and trying to help them. So um, we thought that the goals of our project and the goals of D4AD fit in pretty well together. So when they issued their RFP for proposals, um, we were feeling pretty good, and it turned out that there was a good reason for that. So we were one of three states that received a grant through Data for the American Dream, uh, along with Colorado in New Jersey to help develop our project, to develop this uh, new innovative um, intelligent workforce system. So what does that system look like? As I said earlier, essentially what we're trying to do is we're developing some tools for our workforce development partners. Um, those tools are focused on helping those individuals from those underrepresented and low income groups make a transition to sustainable employment, not just to any job. We want them to get them on a good job, on that career pathway that we're all trying to get them on. And not just do it in any way, we wanted to do it uh, in a data-driven way, right? Use the data and provide personalized support. So you're gonna hear me use that term a few times during the presentation today, because that's really important to what we're doing, is it's, it's not just a uh, you know one size fits all. This is we're trying to come up with personalized support and recommendations for each and every job seeker that we're trying to help out there. So moving on to what the, the project looked like uh, on a larger scale. Um, you know, big picture, we're trying to create these tools to provide these uh, personalized recommendations, right? To improve a customer's labor market success. So in particular, we're focused on two groups, as the Michigan Works case managers, as well as the job seekers. So we're developing two tools, a tool for each. There's a lot of overlap in these tools. Uh, you'll hear a little bit about later, but most of what you're gonna hear about today is the tool for case managers. That's the tool that we spent the most time on to date, uh, that we've made the most progress on. So that's the one we're gonna share the most about. So what makes these tools innovative? What makes them special? And I think the main thing is, it's the data that's driving these. So, I know many of you uh, listening are probably familiar with uh, some of our in-demand jobs products, right? Well, source for those is publicly available information or data, what we sometimes call traditional LMI, or labor market information, um, all super critical to the work that we're doing. And that information, that data is incorporated into these tools as well. But we go a step further here because we have what, what those products do, right, is it's broad strokes. When we come up with a hot 50 or we come up with a career outlook, right, that's something that we provide for the state overall or we provide it for, let's say, a prosperity region. We're not targeting that. We can't possibly target products like that at individuals. But with a system like this, like we're developing now, we can because with the one-stop management information system or OSMIS, the Michigan Work staff are working in every day, we have a lot of information on individuals. Uh, we know what their work history looks like. We know what their wage history looks like. We know uh, what their demographics look like. We know a lot of information about these individuals. And that kind of data is what helps us target the recommendations and uh, suggestions we're producing through these tools. Same with Pure Michigan Talent Connect. Uh, we have data in there. Now, while the, the data isn't quite as robust as it is in Osmus, right? Uh, PMTC also has data on job seekers, particularly their work history. So it's that data, right, on these individuals, that richer data that allows us to come up with these personalized recommendations. And a lot of what we're doing is uh, driven by artificial intelligence, machine learning. But these tools are meant to uh, enhance the process of serving these participants. And I say enhance very intentionally, because I know sometimes when people see AI, they see machine learning, they think about automation, they think about jobs being replaced uh, you know, with machines. It's absolutely not what we're talking about today because as individuals that are involved in this process, right, these are, we're, we're all involved with workforce development. We know the role that Michigan Works plays. We know you are irreplaceable uh, as case managers. These tools are meant to just help you make better decisions, enhance what you're already doing. Uh, and I think that's really, really key. The process of how we're going about developing these tools, I think, is also really important. And I want everybody to understand that we realize that if we were just to come up with something right, that had, let's say, had absolutely perfect data that helped you make absolutely perfect recommendations to the job seekers you're trying to serve, if it's not in a user-friendly format, if it's not an approachable tool, it's not something you're going to want to use, not something you will use. 
And so we put a lot of emphasis and we proposed, we made our proposal to D4AD, we, we put a lot of emphasis on design. Um, and we're using what's called a user-centered design methodology because we realize that design component is critical uh, to having these tools be utilized. So what that means is basically that this isn't just kind of a one and done, we put something on a screen and expect people to use it. This is a process that's iterative. We come up with uh, a prototype, we throw it out there for feedback, we incorporate that feedback uh, and develop another prototype. So we're working with a group called eMichigan uh, to develop this, um, the front end of these tools, the part that case managers and job seekers will actually interact with. Um, so this is a user-centered design methodology. It's meant to ensure that the tools are designed based on the needs of the users, the case managers, the job seekers. So we want to make sure everybody understands that there's a lot that's going into that. And as I mentioned, that part of our tool development process is, is in the early stages. Um, we just got it going. And, um, you know, as, as with many things, um, COVID has affected our, our timeline. So, uh, but we're, we're back on track now and um, we're moving forward. And you'll hear from Ben a little bit later about um, potentially potential abilities to get involved with that feedback process. So that's um, how we're going about developing the tools. What do the tools themselves look like? Um, so the case manager tool, as I said, is the one we'll spend most of uh, our time on today. So this tool right, uh, is integrated into Osmos. We thought that made sense for a few reasons. One is you're already working in Osmos uh, every day if you're a Michigan Works case manager. But second, um, the data is all in Osmos as well. Right? So the data that's driving these uh, personalized recommendations, that's coming from Osmos. So Osmos is what made the most sense. Um, what do the tools do, broadly speaking? So they do a couple things. So one is uh, they help with an assessment of a job seeker's current opportunities. And so part of that is what we, we refer to as more like the reality check. So we want, you know, job seekers to be able to understand, you know, when, when they come into Michigan Works, what do their prospects look like at that moment in time? What do they look like right now, right? Um, and we'll get into that a little bit when I, I demo the tool for you all, but also how would their prospects potentially change if they were to take certain actions like investing in education and training? So we want to be able to provide that assessment. We also uh, want to be able to uh, produce some information regarding which program services are most likely to help each job seeker make that successful transition to employment. And so uh, this is where the uh, machine learning gets a little bit heavier into the methodology of making those predictions and recommendations. Um, and so this is the part that um, is more involved. And so it's not as developed as other parts of the tool, but we're, um, again, um, making a lot of headway with this part right now. So more specifically, what do the features of the tool look like as it stands now? And by features, I just mean these are kind of the things you can do in the tool. This is the functionality the tool has at the moment. So uh, one is the activity or service recommendations. So we're still working through um, what's capable right now, what we're capable of doing right now versus uh, down the road. But for instance, um, making a decision about is it a, you know, is this person more likely to have success if they engage in a job search or if they um, pursue some training when they come in? Or it could be targeted at uh, support services, which support services are recommended for an individual if it's you know, support services likely to increase this person's odd of a successful transition to employment. So that, that's one big component that's targeted at these individuals. Um, Additionally, the likelihood of reemployment. So in some cases, how likely is it they're going to find a job within a certain amount of time, let's say six months? What's the probability of finding a job? How long should they expect their job search to take? Uh, it's important to set those expectations right, with somebody. So um, again, we're using the data in Osmos to come up with these personalized calculations and estimates of um, how likely someone is to find a job, how long it should take them to search for a job. Um, additionally, right, using someone's work history, we can look at okay, what jobs relate to a person's existing skill set, what jobs are out there right now based off somebody's uh, current resume, um, what should they expect to make if uh, they want to pursue their current or most recent career path versus how would those earnings change if they were to maybe look into some uh, education and training options. And then finally, also providing information on what those local training opportunities 
look like. So that's what's in the tool uh, as it stands now. And I can take a minute and go ahead and I'm gonna just give you one second. I've got to make a transition to a different screen here. But then I can take you on a little demo of what the tool is looking like right now. And I apologize for the lag. Um, while that's going on, I can um, mention that I know on Monday there was a session that some of you may have attended that was uh, reviewing the Osmus dashboard, the new Osmus dashboard. And if you attended that or you've been tinkering with that Osmus dashboard, then what's on the screen right now should look familiar. So what's off on the left there, that is um, something that's currently integrated into that Osmos dashboard. So you can search for the individuals that you're serving, show what programs they're in, things like that. What's off on the right is also there, but what's not is this view profile button. And so if you click that, right, then what you get, um, the first thing that loads up, so again, let me just, you know, like I said, this is early. Well, this is a very early um, prototype of what's in the tool right now. And again, there's an iterative process going on of us making changes to this all the time that'll be going on throughout the rest of the year. Um, so this is just very early, but we want to give everyone an idea of what it looks like right now, especially to inform our conversation later in the panel. Um, so you see, you get some um, basic information on the job seeker loads up, what programs they're in. Um, but also uh, something we're working on. So we talked about recommendations for uh, services and activities. That's what's going to go uh, over on the right here, where you see the recommendations listed off. Um, where those go, right? We're still working on that, but that's one thing that's going to be in the tool. Um, moving to the second tab, this is kind of that reality check component we were talking about, where we want to give someone an idea of where they stand in the labor market right now. Um, so if, let's say this person's uh, current or most recent job was a manufacturing shift manager. Um, what this does is so this information should look familiar to several of you that are familiar with LMI products, looking at things like wages, uh, looking at um, job openings, looking at growth, um, giving, again, someone an idea of, okay, here's what your current or most recent job looks like. So this is some more traditional LMI based off someone's uh, last occupation or current occupation. What's new? So, you know, on the previous screen, we talked about those service recommendations, activity recommendations. That's all stuff that's being driven by the Osmos data. That's personalized to the individual. So are the things on the bottom of this screen. So the odds of reemployment, how likely is it this person finds a job, let's say within six months? Uh, the screen says 63%, right? This is all, of course, uh, dummy data. This isn't anybody's actual data, but, um, Right, that's, that's a personalized percentage for that individual, the, the case manager is serving at that time. The expected time to reemployment, so it's four to six months. Again, that's something that's personalized to the individual. So um, again, the, what this screen is meant to do is just kind of give them the correct set of expectations uh, about what their labor market prospects look like right now. Um, the third, tab that's on here, right, is meant to do, take that next step. So after we have that uh, reality check, it's okay, so how could those outcomes change for this particular individual, depending on some actions they might take? Um, so let's say, you know, so we, you can see here, there's some hot jobs listed. Uh, there's some other job options based on someone's experience. So that's gonna be related to the individual based off what their work history looks like. Um, but let's say this person wants to look into what electrical engineering might hold for them. You can pull up all the information about electrical engineering, localized to your area, um, and go over that with the individual. But crucially, right, what you can do is do a direct comparison. So on the left, you've got what their current or most recent job was. On the right, you've got something they're looking into doing, uh, investing in some education and training. So um, again, still working on the visualizations, all that stuff. But the, the critical thing here is we're taking something personalized to the individual, what their old job was, and we're comparing that job to um, some other job options for them, what that might hold. 
Other stuff we're looking at, so there'll be job openings listed. This will be coming from uh, Pure Michigan Talent Connect. Uh, as we go through also, what does it you know, take to become an electrical engineer or some other kind of job? So meant to lay out what that pathway might look like, but critically, um, so this one says post-education in the middle. That is not what it will say in the next iteration. What that's gonna be is, it's gonna be a direct link to local training opportunities. So that's some of the feedback we've received from our Michigan Works partners is now we wanna be able to go from occupation to directly, right? What's a program I can get somebody in right now that's gonna allow them to pursue that occupation, to get into that occupation. So linking up with things off the eligible training provider list, right, as the next step. And so this search, right, uh, you can do these comparisons, uh, you can compare to other jobs, uh, that you can select, um, but also if somebody wants to maybe look at more of a major or a field of study as opposed to um, looking directly at the job, that's that's another way that you can do this too, and it, it'll lead back here uh, again to coming up with what are the expected outcomes and what are those education training nearby education training opportunities nearby look like. Uh, so with that, I think I'm going to go ahead and stop the demo. And then I'm going to go ahead and turn things over to Ben. And so he can tell you a little bit about what, you know, some examples might look like of using this from a Michigan Works perspective. And give me one second, Ben, and I'll get the slides back up. Yep, no problem. And I'm seeing some excitement in the comments. Uh, and that's exactly uh, what we're going to get into is uh, how this can be applied in everyday scenarios that our staff deal with. Uh, and as Scott mentioned, uh, the Upjohn Institute, they did uh, deploy this tool in Georgia several years ago, and we did learn from that as well. Um, so some of the examples that we have here, uh, individual who's been in several entry level positions, uh, was recently laid off. They have some great transferable soft skills, uh, but they lack the education that they need to really get on a better career pathway. So with the assistance of the tool, the staff can help the customer determine which occupations are growing and match their interests, as well as compare types and lengths of the available training that fits their, their family needs. Uh, and this is really one where what we learned from Georgia is uh, it, it, it assisted with those uncomfortable conversations with individuals. So if somebody really has an expectation that's not realistic based on their education level or experience, um, it's not just you telling them, you know, you need to take these steps to get on a career pathway. Uh, we have the data that can back it up and show, you know, what's going to be best for their long-term career goals. And the next example that we have here is uh, very similar to one that we see in Michigan often. A person was long-term employed uh, in the same occupation but was currently laid off. Uh, they're worried about the industry as a whole as it may be in decline and they're looking at sw switching occupations. Uh, with the help of this tool and their career coach, they'll be able to review uh, specific in information on different industries and occupations locally, um, see if additional training is needed. And again, it's just having that additional information just at your fingertips. Um, obviously, the LMI shop has done a wonderful job of providing projections and our hot jobs, but now we just have it at the click of our fingers uh, within Os Osmos, which is gonna be amazing. And then this last uh, slide that we have here, I, I really appreciate. It was a testimonial from a staff member in Georgia, and I think uh, all Michigan Works staff will be able to relate to this. Uh, she said, as a, as a caseworker, I would spend at least 30 minutes with each client inputting information that I knew was not going to be used to help my client directly, but only to fill out reports. Now we have an opportunity to use this information to do a better job helping our clients, um, which Scott has talked about. I mean, that's exactly what this tool is about, is getting us better information to better serve our customers. Uh, and the information that you're inputting into Osmos is now going to be used to help out others as well. And so Scott had mentioned previously the PMTC version. Um, so this is going to be similar in terms of the features. It's just not going to have the robust data behind it, the administrative data. And the recommendations are really going to be based on the individual's education and work history. Uh, and so while it's still going to be a beneficial tool, 
I think, uh, you know, the career coach data is going to be so valuable uh, because, as you know, uh, workforce development can be a foreign language at times uh, to others. So having that career coach available to interpret the results uh, and make the best decision with the customers, I think, is going to be the most effective. Uh, however, as we all know, we cannot work with uh, every person who comes through our doors on a one on one basis. And we still wanted to provide um, some type of tool available to the general public as a whole. So this will be integrated into Pure Michigan Talent Connect as well. And then as Scott mentioned, uh, we are going to open it up for discussion, but just wanted to let you all know if you're interested in being a tester, it's so important that we get that user feedback information. So we'll be talking with the uh, planners group. Please talk with your supervisor or manager if you're interested in being part of that user feedback group. Uh, we'd like to have all the Michigan Works areas represented if possible. Um, so that will be coming out, that will be starting within the coming months. And again, this is what uh, Scott had showed earlier, just in ter terms of the tool features. Um, so definitely interested in any feedback that anyone has right now. If you'd like to input that into the chat session, uh, Scott and I could answer any questions. And so actually we do have a question in here. So this program would only be available to Michigan Works employees. Uh, Michigan Works employees with access to OSMIS, yes. Uh, with the Pure Michigan Talent Connect side, as we said, that would be available to anyone. They just won't have that one-on-one uh, -on -one interaction with a career coach who's trained within the tool uh, to help interpret the results and uh, develop a career plan. God, I see we have another question. If you want to answer, uh, when is this <laughs> sure. ready? If you want to talk about the timeline that we have. Yeah, so I can do that. Um, hey, Craig. But um, uh, what we're doing right now is, so with our, our uh, project plan with Data for the American Dream, so the, you know, that stuff will be wrapped up by the end of May. 2021, and so the process right now. So we'll we'll go over this again at the end. But uh, you know, next step now are um, to uh, continue the development, uh, piloting this with the partners that we have at Upjohn and Michigan Works Southwest, and that'll be going on you know, through the end of May, and then throughout the rest of 2021 is when we'll have uh, the rollout statewide to all Michigan Works. That's the plan as of now. Perfect. And I see we have another question asking if there's a demo on the PMTC uh, to see what the general public will see, which uh, we do not have that uh, prototyped at this time. I don't know if you want to add anything else on that, Scott. Nope. Uh, just to, I think that's right, Ben. It's just that's kind of the, um, been the prioritization of things so far is that the work on our the case manager tool first, um, but we don't have any demo. Any way to demo uh, at the moment, other than just to say that, um, you know, it will have a lot of similar features, but like Ben was saying, you know, there's only so much that's in. So those things that we can really personalize in uh, the case manager tool, right, such as, you know, time to reemployment or odds of reemployment, that stuff that's being driven heavily by data that's in Osmos that we don't have available in Pure Michigan Talent Connect. So the stuff that's uh, going to be in Talent Connect is going to be more focused on someone's work history. If there's stuff that's some linked to somebody's work history, like related jobs, skills, occupation, stuff like that, uh, that's what's going to be in that tool. We have a we have a few different requests coming in now. Uh, there's one question about sharing the presentation, which this is recorded and will be available. Um, I believe all presentations uh, will be available as well. And we had a request to go back to the screenshot slide for a moment. That was actually in, Scott would need to go into a different um, feature to show that. Let me, uh, yep, just let me swap screens. It'll just take me a second. Um, there were several screens, so I think it looks like Michelle is the one asking that. Uh, Michelle, if there's a particular part you wanted to see, let me know, just or let us know in the chat. 
but yeah, I can go back to uh, what that looks like right now. I think part of what Ben and I are hoping to get from the group um, is, you know, the things you're seeing on your screen right now, is there any features these that you would like to see that aren't here right now, right? What's missing? I think that'd be really great if anybody has any ideas they want to throw out. Um, let me just give you one second. And yeah, this the screen. The sharing takes, it's, it's got a bit of a lag, so. So I see we did have a uh, question about if there would be customization for specific target populations like returning citizens. Uh, and I can say based on um, what was done in Georgia, they did customize for different types of job seekers. Um, so that might be further down the line, but we specifically customized for UI claimants at risk of exhausting benefits uh, employment service registr registrants who are not eligible for UI, uh, veterans, and youth. Yeah, so the, the main thing we're looking at so far is yeah, it's going to be focused around the you know, program. So the, some of the, you know, the machine learning algorithms that we have integrated into the tool, right, are they going to be looking at, so the adult program, dislocated worker program, um, path program, things like that. But, um, but yeah, I also agree with everything Ben said as far as the, the, the more customized groups is something I'd probably look at more down the road. I saw a question about uh, each MWA needing to subscribe to this feature. It will be available to all MWAs. So I can't read the chat and navigate the demo. So if, um, <laughs> I think I'm doing what Michelle. But yeah, Michelle had asked for the individualized data pathway information. And she replied, thank you. Sure, of course. And Raina, we are starting with the uh, planners users group, but we will definitely be talking with the Osmus users group as well. Um. <laughs> Tammy, why are you asking for that? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there you go, Tammy. Um, so this, again, so this button here, right, is what uh, eMichigan has informed us doesn't currently exist. And that's, this is, but this is all subject to change, by the way. So if, there's, if you have any recommendations, I guess I, I can't emphasize that enough. Uh, you know, two things. One, we're just starting the development of this as far as, you know, the front end, what the tool looks like, what's included, but also, um, you know, this is absolutely um, a user-centered design process, right? That's something we really want to emphasize. So we really welcome all that feedback. And to get to the user testing group, please talk with your supervisor or manager and let them know your interest uh, because we will be soliciting volunteers from all uh, MWAs interested. Um, but yeah, if anybody else would like to see anything else in the demo, I'm, I'm happy to uh, navigate to that. Um, got it, Tammy. Okay. Yep. Um, but you know, obviously, uh, as you know, many in the conference, right? We we're Ben and I were certainly hoping to share this all with you in person and have a rousing discussion. Um, we realize that's a bit uh, tricky with the chat feature like this, but um, we have these mechanisms set up uh, for future feedback. But if there's anything comes to mind right now on um, why doesn't it do this kind of thing, um, that's, it's a good time to submit those just because of the stage of development that we're at. All right. And I don't know. 
I'm gonna. I can come back to the demo screen, but I think I'll um, let me navigate back to that last slide, Ben, just to kind of throw up those features again, so everybody can see. And Dominique had a question about individuals or case managers will be able to filter so they can search for jobs in their area that they want to work in. Yes, that is correct. And they'll also be able to search for educational opportunities within their uh, region. Okay, so again, you know, so the, the top thing here, right, is just these uh, activity or service recommendations uh, that's a lot of what's going to be driven by the machine learning algorithms right the predictive algorithms um likelihood of reemployment how long it should take someone to find a job um how long they should expect it to take to find a job really. um jobs that relate to someone's existing skill set based on their previous employment or current employment expected earnings uh, given their current skill set, but also what they could expect to earn if they were to invest in education and training and what those training opportunities, those are things off the ETPL, what do they look like locally? So those are the main features of the tool as it sits right now. We did have a comment from Aaron talking about uh, individuals with criminal backgrounds and how that will affect uh, their employment opportunities. And that's a great point, Aaron. Um, and that goes back to setting realistic expectations for our customers. So that is definitely something we can take into consideration. And we had another question about the data customized by region uh, rather than the state. Do you want to talk about that a little further, Scott? Yes. So um, at the way it's set up now, again, right, this is all, all subject to, to feedback, but um, so the way the uh, LMISI currently produces a lot of information, the only substate region we have is prosperity region. So we can't do a mission works area, but we can do it by prosperity region. And that's what's uh, gonna be driving the tool at this point in time is the um, prosperity region based data for things like wages and, uh, and openings. Right, so to uh, Kate, with your example, it will break out and show uh, the demand in terms of engineers as an example, um, where that's greater uh, across the state throughout the prosperity regions. Okay. Right. Any other feedback or questions at this time? I was very happy to see all the enthusiasm in the chat. Absolutely. Well, um, feel free to keep using the chat. I'll go ahead and get to the next slide then. Yep, so next steps, uh, as Scott mentioned, we have the tool development and feedback process, which will start occurring um, and become more intense, intensive over the next couple of months. Uh, we will be piloting the tool in our area, uh, Michigan Works Southwest. Uh, so very excited to learn from that experience and uh, you know troubleshoot, make any tweaks um, to the tool as we learn about how effective it's working. And then we will be doing a statewide rollout and training for all users in 2021. So very excited for what's ahead and uh, really want to thank our partners at uh, the state uh, labor and economic opportunities and DTMB, LMI. Um, Scott and his group have been great to work with uh, and really appreciate um, everything they've done throughout the pandemic. Uh, we've been meeting pr very frequently with some intensive meetings and uh, deadlines. So thank you for your partnership, Scott. Yep, right back at you, Ben. And um, also uh, one, one more part of these data for the American dream, of course, right? So um, large, large uh, investment in us and belief in what we're doing. So uh, we appreciate their support.
as well that yeah i definitely second what you're saying ben it's been, uh, i think a really productive and great partnership so far so uh, we look forward to continuing it and developing a great tool for all of you um, okay just looking to do one last check for questions don't see anybody um so i think we can probably go ahead and wrap up what do you think ben yep sounds good thank you all have a good rest of the conference all right thanks everybody take care